But the reality is that existence is what makes you sick. And I don't just mean this. We're talking about hurry sickness. This is like sickness in every form. This is where chronic diseases and, you know, infections, parasites, mold, all these things, they, when you're wondering like, why am I not healing? It's because your body is in a state of constant fight or flight. It is perceiving threat at all times because you're racing around and your brain is receiving all the the messages. So your body is like frantic because it is frantic, right? Like you're like making lunches and making dinner and like racing around your house, can't find your keys. All of that movement, all of that chaos is signaling it like we're in a war. You are listening to the Famous at Home podcast with Dr. Josh and Christy Straub. Because when it's all said and done, we all want to know that we were famous at home. Welcome back to the Famous at Home podcast. Today we're talking about hurry sickness and your kids. Before we jump in, here is a word from our sponsors. Hey everybody, Josh Straub here with Famous at Home. We want to introduce you to the Famous at Home Starter Bundle. This is something we created just for you. All you have to do is click the button to sign up to receive our our workbook, Seven Decisions to Putting Your Family Center Stage. You'll also get a feelings chart handout that you can implement with your kids and with your spouse. And you'll also receive the 100 Commonly Held Values Worksheet so that you can sit down with your family and discuss the values that you want to set as a family that will provide vision for how and you want to lead your family in the direction that you're going to head in. So you get those three things right away as soon as you sign up. In addition to that, we will send to you our top podcast episodes on marriage, parenting, and family, the the most listened to and the most foundational for developing emotional connection with your loved ones. You'll also receive past newsletters, our exclusive weekly newsletter. You'll be enrolled to receive that on an ongoing basis. These are real-time newsletters of what's happening in our lives and what we're doing and implementing to be famous at home that we want to give to you just weekly nuggets to keep us, uh, to keep us uh, equipped uh, every single week. And then you'll also receive the weekly podcast episodes as well. This starter bundle is all free. We want to give it to you. Just click the link to sign up. Welcome back. Today we're talking about hurry sickness. Christy, why don't you define hurry sickness for us? The sickness that we experience when we've lived a life of hurry. And it's funny, I am like new to this term. I did not even know it was a term. And when I read about it, I was, you know, when something is just like a light bulb goes off and you're like, oh, that's a name to what I've known and what I've experienced. And we want to talk about today because we're talking about just the emotional health of our kids which really is a reflection of the emotional health of us and realizing, especially with hurry sickness, it is so pervasive. It's so normal. Um, and this is the one thing that I feel like I have this year felt the Lord focusing me on like this thing, you know, a lot of, you know, we've, we homeschool and recently like, we've brought the kids home even from their little two day week tutorial and we're homeschooling fully. And that's added, you know, somewhat of a pressure of like, you know, having to keep them on a schedule and like making sure they're actually like learning stuff and realizing I'm putting all this pressure on myself. And a lot of it is a result of hurry sickness. Like it's this undoing of the normal that I've known for almost four decades now. And the undoing of that is slow and I really want to talk about it as and it relates to really our, 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 kids, our kids and the effects of our, our family. Kids. Because we, we, we're good at hurry. You and I are really good at hurry. We're both firstborns. We're both type <laughs> A's. And I feel like our culture, our culture rewards us for being oh, hurried. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause it is hurried. And our culture, I believe is also set up to fragment and, disintegrate the family yeah. and the family unit. And I yeah. think hurry is part of that. I think individualizing us is part of that. I think um, individualizing us, but also hurrying us and separating everybody yeah. and fragmenting everybody is part of what is crumbling the family unit. And I think that hurriedness is having an effect on our children. I mean, I don't think so. I know so. Like yeah. I, we see it in the research. We see it. 
I mean, that that is passed down. There's a trickle down effect. I see it in my own kids, in my own hurry. And we want to talk about that because we want to talk about ways that we are scaling back our hurry in our lives. What's fascinating for me is, if you've heard me talk about this in recent weeks, you know, I have this uh, monk manual. Uh, it's called a monk manual. It's, it's like a journal, um, but... Basically, it's it's also a to-do list, but it helps you do and be is what it does. And so it has my list of things I have to do for the day, but it also helps me to be. And out of that, one of the things that's been fascinating for me is learning to put, um, it's, it's learning to pay attention to what's actually happening throughout the day. And so there's a theme at the top of, of the month that your theme is for the month. And my theme has been slow down. And I have to tell you, like it has taken me, Every single day, I'm going slow down in every day because every day you're writing your schedule and then you're writing and I'm going slow down tomorrow, slow down tomorrow, slow down tomorrow, wow. like slow down even more tomorrow because I, I feel like, <laughs> try again. It, like, yeah, try again. <laughs> and one of the, and we're going to talk about some of the ways that we've done this. We're going to talk about four ways that we can slow down hurry that we have, that we have found that we're doing in our lives that have been doing in our lives and that we're finding to work in our lives, and I think might give you some practical ways that you can do it as well. So I do want to say this. I think hurry sickness is something that heals over time. I don't think it's something you can heal right away. However, I do think there are practical things that you can implement right away that will help you begin yes. that healing process, yep. and that's what we want to talk about today. I also want to say this too. One of the reasons we're talking about this right now, last week we talked about the four pillars of emotional health in kids. I think, I mean, this is huge for our, for our day and age. This is huge for the hour that we're living in. We want to pay attention to our kids' emotional and spiritual health in the hour that we're living in. And Ooh. and I think that we I think it's a priority. I think it's 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 if you have kids, it is it is our God-given uh calling to prioritize home as the as that main relationship to really the stewarding the hearts that are under your roof. And and in so doing that, uh, we are we're launching the second iteration of our My Kids EQ coaching workshop, and so we would love for you to check that out in the show notes. These episodes here are really about starting to set this set the stage for that. And so, if you're a parent, if you're a, a, a teacher, if you're a school administrator, if you're a therapist, if you have an interest, you're a church leader, an interest at all in children's ministry, missionaries, uh, an interest at all in kids ministry for emotional and spiritual development. We want you to be one of the first to get the new curriculum and also go through the My Kids EQ coaching workshop. And so we'd love for you to sign up for that. Uh, again, you'll see the link in the show notes. Uh, registration is currently happening. We do cap it. So please make sure that you jump in before that cap uh, gets hit. And uh, it will launch. It will start June 5th and run through June and July. Some of you might be wondering, well, why are we doing it through the summer? Uh, we're doing it through the summer because we have found in the first iteration of this in the spring that a lot of families uh, were just super busy with school, already other school stuff, and they're now saving it for the summer. And so this is our second iteration of it, second time we're launching it. Uh, it is open and closed. We can only do so many people at a time to really do it well. And, uh, and we've just found that summer months, we're like, hey, let's do this because you have time with your kids. And so if, if you're thinking, what are we going to do with our kids this summer? We really encourage you to sign up for that. Uh, it'll start June 5th and we'll run June and July. So take a look at that. I'm just so excited for it. It was, it's, it's just been so, I don't know, rewarding. And um, it's like you're watching fires get lit under these, I mean, not just families. I mean, there are, there's therapists and school administrators where they're like catching this vision of like, it doesn't have to be this way. Kids are not subject to this culture. There's so much hope for them. And to watch right. them walk these kids through, really, it's a lot of healing. And I just want to say, if you have if you were one of those families who went through this, uh, you know, the first iteration of it, we would love your testimonies. Um, email them to us. Yeah. Uh, let us know. Uh, go to famousathome.com. Just, just let us know because we'll post those and we'll, um, share those. It, the people who went through, I'm telling you, it was, there are like, it's, it's like you find friends you never knew you had. And that's, that's kind of what, what this has been for us. And it's yeah. just been, it's been a really cool thing. So, so, so cool. sign up for that. We're going to talk about hurry sickness. Uh, we have four ways, four things that we've recently done that we are doing. Uh, I'm going to jump to this one because I think this is one that you and I both uh, has been influential. We didn't even know each other was actually doing it, but we started doing it together. Um, 
Wait, I don't know. We didn't even know until we what, talked about it today. What are you about to say? I don't know. Well, so in my monk manual and this thing that I have, that, and again, it's just a journal. It's a... Uh, Oh, I know what you're going to say. So I've yeah. been I've been scheduling my days, but what I've been doing is I've been scheduling an extra 15 minutes. I've been finding margin in my mm-hmm. day. So I want to start there. I want to start by helping us find margin in our day. Because mm-hmm. I think hurry sickness is a result of not creating margin. You know, I heard this said this week. I was at a number of different events last week and uh, a couple of different conferences, things that have been going on. It's conference season, right? And so there's a lot of things going on. But man, I heard a speaker say this and it had to do with screen time. It had to do with the amount of time we're wasting and spending on screens. But she was talking about time management. And she said, we manage our time as if we own it. But she said, you do not own your time. Time is a gift from God. Mm. It's something given to you as a gift. You don't own it. You manage things that you own, but you don't own your time. It is given to you as a gift and to start treating it as a gift rather than something that we own. And so it was, it was a, to me, it was a profound moment of clarification for me to go, I've been given this time. How am I, how am I using what I've been given? And so I've been scheduling 15 minute margins in between meetings, in between phone calls, in between even if I'm moving from one task to another, because it has just given me space to go for a walk. It has given me space to maybe answer an email. It has given me space to be able to gain some clarity throughout my work day to, to even walk out and go be present with, with the kids or with Christy. There's space where I'm not rushing from thing to thing and then going, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm now backed up and I have to apologize to people. And then I'm feeling so frantic that by the end of the day, I feel like I've had zero time to even orient yeah. my own body and my mind and my heart and my soul. So the 15, adding 15 minute increment has been a huge one for me. It was funny. I was just telling him, I was like, when I'm scheduling sessions, I schedule an extra 15 minutes in between so that I have this buffer in between. And he was like, oh my goodness, that's what I've been doing too. But I just realized, um, I need it. Like I need it. I can't go back to back. Um, especially when you're, I think meeting with people, but to be my best self, to be my full, to come fully. But that's even with like the kids, you know, I'm, I need that little bit of buffer that I'm not rushing them all the time. And even though they're mostly at home, like you're still moving them from thing to thing. Like we're moving from math to science. We're taking the dog for a walk or whatever. I need to, I need to not feel like I'm rushing them. They need me to not rush them. They need to feel like we have the gift of this day. And it's not like something we're just enduring and racing through. But honestly, that's what it's been. Like that's what in years when the kids were, you know, in just traditional schooling, we were working a little, I mean, even I've, I mean, I've never even worked full time, but just to add in, you know, those responsibilities on top, like I was just rushing through everything, groceries, like grocery, making a grocery list, making a meal, like you're just rushing. And then you're right though. And then you're still sitting on the, you know, the couch at the end of the night, scrolling aimlessly or watching a show and you're like, well, there's all this time that I've not been using. Well, well. and I think a lot of times, <laughs> I think a lot of times what ends up happening is this very thing. And I, yeah. I actually wrote about this last week. So if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, we'd love for you to subscribe. You can get a starter bundle at famoushome.com. Go get that. Um, we'd love for you to check that out. But every week we're putting out a newsletter and kind of what's going on in our lives. It can go a little bit deeper than, than even the podcast. And I wrote about this last week, actually, where it's like, I find that whenever I have been so overwhelmed in my life, that I just want to veg. I just want to tune yep. out. So I'm tuning out on, I don't know, ESPN or I'm tuning out on something that those moments actually, I don't walk away from those moments feeling better about my life or feeling <laughs> rested. <laughs> In fact, I feel more disconnected from my family, from my wife and from my kids. And if I just had enough space or I just was able to say yes mm-hmm. to the thing that my body and my everything else, everything in me was 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 rejecting and not wanting to do because it felt exhausting or tiring. If I just said yes to it, I find that in the long run, it is so much more. At the end of my day, I feel so much more rested and and at peace about my life because I've invested in the thing that actually does matter and that I know in my brain matters. Yeah. So you're what you're doing is you're 
in the moment you're going against what feels good but you're but what you're doing is you're bringing together the dissonance that you feel between the way you're living your life and the way you believe you should be living your life with that said we're gonna take a quick break when we come back we're gonna talk about three other ways that we are finding more margin and also combating hurry sickness in our family we'll be right back Hey everybody, Josh Drop here with Famous at Home. I want to introduce you to something if you haven't uh, already seen it. This is our new book, Famous at Home, Seven Decisions to Putting Your Family Center Stage in a World Competing for Your Time, Attention, and Identity. When a couple or a family comes to us and says, hey, Josh, we have a question. What do we do next? We always point to this book. This is our coaching playbook. These, This is the play-by-play strategies that we use to help families to be famous at home. And so if you have not picked up this book yet, we highly encourage you to get a copy. You can see a link in the show notes. You can click a link right here uh, in the video. And we would love to, for you to be able to get a copy of this in your hands. If you want to go deeper uh, than the podcast episodes, this is the way to do that. It's our way of walking alongside your family to help you be famous at home. All right. So we talked about margin in your day. We talked about finding this moment where you can create 15 more minutes. And, and, and I want to say this too, just before we move on to the next one, even if you have to, you're taking the kids to school, you're picking the kids up, you're driving from activity to activity, give yourself an extra 15 minutes to leave the house. Give yourself, rather than waiting to the very last minute oh to the gosh, point that I you're always rushing. Did that. Always did that. Like you, you're rushing down. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, you're, you're, you're racing out of, the, your kids are feeling that. Mm-hmm. Your kids are feeling that rush. Whereas if you're just driving down the road and you can actually drive the speed limit, you can enjoy the journey while you're driving. I I mean, I've been doing this more lately, trying to get ahead when I'm leaving to go somewhere and I'm enjoying my drives. I'm not like a chaotic, crazy race car driver on the interstate anymore. I'm you, becoming more of a relaxed grandpa. You're making me concerned that you were before. <laughs> You're making you concerned what? That you were before, a crazy oh. race car driver before. Well, I mean. But the thing is, I mean, I could go into a, I want to keep this topic, this topic, because there's just a million things happening to your nervous system when you're existing like this. And we can maybe talk about this at the end, but I really want to get practical because when you're living in that state of hurry, you're, you're in fight or flight. And we've talked about this some on the podcast, but the reality is that existence is what makes you sick. And I don't just mean this, we're talking about hurry sickness. This is like sickness in every form. This is where chronic diseases and, you know, infections, parasites, mold, all these things, they, when you're wondering like, why am I not healing? It's because your body is in a state of constant fight or flight. It is perceiving threat at all times because you're racing around and your brain is receiving all the the messages. So your body is like, frantic because it is frantic, right? Like you're like making lunches and making dinner and like racing around your house, can't find your keys. All of that movement, all of that chaos is signaling it like we're in a war, like crap, (laughs) fight. And so can you imagine why you get sick? Can you imagine why you shut down on the weekends or at the end of the day? Of course you do. Like you collapse. And so this is not just for like, oh, it's a better way to live. Like um, it's, it's critically important that we there's a this. depth to this yeah. that goes way yeah. deeper than, yeah, than, than just these practical things. But the other component of this too, this is fascinating. I was driving, um, with my son Landon, uh, a couple weeks ago, we're driving to an event and I'm going through my talk with him and I'm thinking to myself, like if I'm going to speak on these things and he's going to be in the room listening to me speak on these things, I better be living these things well. And I want to hear his perspective as a 10 year old, like how's dad doing with this stuff? And one of my main points as, as many of you who listen to our podcast, uh, have, have already heard us talk about is, or if you've read our book famous at home, we talk about that. It's who you're becoming, uh, prioritizing who you're becoming and focusing on how you show up in the world around you so that parenting the, the, the greatest, predictor of, of how your kids are going to turn out is who you're becoming as an adult. And so I asked my son, Landon, I said, what, you know, you know, you see me prioritizing and taking care of myself. You know, I work out, I eat right, you know, those types of things. Um, and you also see me read my Bible. You see me doing things for me. How does me taking care of me help you? 
do you see that? Is it, do you feel like it's taking time away from you? Do you feel like it's, Mm. you know, help me understand that from your perspective. Is it actually helping or is it hurting? And he said, dad, this was so fascinating. And I can't remember the exact way that he said it, but out of the mouth of babes. And by the way, if you want to know how you're doing as a parent, just ask your kids. They're going to tell you. Um, uh, but he told me, he said, I, uh, you, 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 when you're doing well, dad, like when you are, and I'm trying to put this in perspective in the way that he described it, but it's basically like, I can trust you. And he used the word trust. Hmm. Like you, you, you get into my world. He, he, I don't know that he used these exact words, but he, I'll tell you what he did use. He used this. He said, you get, you let your yes be yes and your no be no. And I was like, holy cow, like, I was like, that's in the Bible, right? And he's like, well, yeah, it's also in Tuttle Twins. I was like, okay, <laughs> good job, Tuttle Twins. Like, um, but, he, and, he, and he said, like, you actually follow through. Like, when you say you're going to play with me, you play with me. And he said, I can tell when you're really busy because you'll say you do, but then you don't. And I'm going, oh, wow. Like, our kids pick wow. up on this stuff. When we say, like, in a minute. Or in a one minute sec. or one second. And he said, dad, I just, I, I know that I can trust you when you're doing, well. when you're doing well, like wow. I know that I can trust you. <laughs> and, I, and I'm thinking, holy cow, this is coming from a 10 year old. And so I just think it's important for us to think about that in relation to our own hurry and what it, what our kids are picking up on. Right. Cause we're talking about this with, as your kids and hurry sickness, this is about how our hurry sickness is influencing our kids yeah. and they do pick up on it. And so I think that to that point, I think, to what you said, Christy, I think, you know, um, it is much deeper than what we, than what we think. Say so that said, let's, let's go to this. Cause you, you kind of touched on it a little bit is there's an exercise that we do in my kids EQ. It's called the five, four, three, two, one exercise. I do this at events. I do this. If I'm, you know, speaking somewhere, or I'm meeting with a group of people just to orient to our time and place. So in other words, five, four, three, two, one exercise is closing your eyes, uh, and I'm just going to, I'm going to go through it real quickly rather than taking you through it, but just to go through it real quickly, basically closing your eyes, finding five things that, and opening them and going five things that you can see, four things that you can, uh, touch three things that you can hear, two things that you can smell and one thing that you can taste in the room. And you're closing your eyes in between and you're, then you're opening your eyes, then you're walking through each of those senses. But what you're doing is you're orienting your senses to the very place and time that you find yourself in and what it does is it just helps you get centered into uh, this works for panic attacks and those types of things it just helps you get centered back into the moment and gets the flying monkeys in your brain this is how we help people at an event get focused to to yeah. the moment rather than having their minds wander all over the place as i'm getting ready to speak or share on a particular topic yeah it's actually powerful the power of attention uh, i mean it's paramount but what's crazy with why we use this in terms of hurry sickness is that when we're hurrying, we're either fleeing something that's behind us, like in the past, or we're fearing something that's coming in the future, but neither of those are happening in the present. And so the actual existence of living in the present, which I know people talk about a lot. I feel like I just for so long didn't really understand what that means, like being present. Um, And I'm finally really grasping what it means to be present. Like this present moment is the only one in which the presence of God is um, with me that I I experience him right now. He is in the past. He is in the future, but I can only experience him right now. And we miss it when we're worried about the future and we're running from the past. But that's what hurry sickness is really doing even with our kids, right? It's this concern about what's coming up. And this is where we get sort of anxious typed kids that are like worried about all the potential threats that could be coming in the future. And, um, those are, that's concerning when you realize we've sort of trained them to think that way because we're like, well, guys, we got this, we got this, we got this coming. Like, it's like prepare, 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 prepare. We're not telling them like live, be here now. What do you notice? That's, so five, four, three, two, one is really um, an exercise of asking the question, which I think we've mentioned on the podcast before, but what do you notice? What do you notice right now? If you can't, if your kids are too young and that's a lot of things to remember, um, to just fi- have them find something in the room and just describe it to you. What do you notice about it? What do you like about it? 
and you will have their attention like that. And you, they will come out of what they were, wherever their mind was trapped like that. I was with someone uh, just the other day who was having a panic attack and I real fast was like, I want you to look outside right now and tell me what the clouds look like. And so she described the clouds and all of us, and it's, it all, it starts to come down. So the power of it is um, like, it's amazing. And it's really a way we can control our minds. Like our minds can take off. And this is what happens with kids. Their minds can take off. And this is one way that we can help them focus back into the present. Hmm. The uh, other component of that. So, so you have, so I'm going to just repeat some of these. So the 15 minute margins in your day, if that's one for you, do that. Uh, in a moment of overwhelm, whether it's with you or your kids, coming back and orienting to time and place, sensing, getting getting in touch with what you're sensing. Another way to do this is orienting yourselves to touch. Now, not all kids are touch kids, um, but... But I'll all give, kids have a body. But all so kids have are. a body. <laughs> and so there's a sense of... I'll, and I'll give you an example of this. I was walking with our son the other day uh, from the airport to the parking lot and he still wants to hold my hand and I'm going to hold his hand as long as he wants to hold my hand Mm -hmm. and we didn't say a word to each other. We just held each other's hand and walked to the car. And there was a calm over my body. There was a, I, I'm certain there was, he was calm. I was calm. And it was just sense of, oh, like we're not racing to get to the car because we got to get home. We're not, you know, um, and, that, and that's typical for me. My typical, if I'm by myself, my typical is I'm getting off of that airplane. I'm racing to the parking lot because I want to get home and see my family as soon as I possibly can. And in this moment, I was just like, we'll get home when we get home. Let's just be. And I had to, I had to tell myself that. But then there's moments where your kids are just absolutely overwhelmed. We have a three-year-old, two-year-old, he'll soon be three. I, he'll just lose his mind. <laughs> I mean, just absolutely lose his mind. And there's times where yeah. you don't even know what to do yeah. because you just don't know what to do because nothing's going to calm him down. What we find to be one of the most significant things that calms him down is just simply holding him, mm-hmm. just picking him up and holding him in our arms. Sure, he's kicking. Sure, he's defiant. But holding them in our arms mm-hmm. has a there's a calming effect that happens, and then of course we can you know add a consequence if he's not behaving. But if you try to add a consequence when he's absolutely losing losing his mind, your consequence is not it's going to be pointless anyway. Right, right. So calming them down by holding them is is just a uh, there's there's a sense of calm when we're holding somebody right before this podcast. Christy said to me, we're working, we're moving from thing to thing. Christy said to me, can you give me a hug? I was like, I just need you to hug me. I need you to hug me. That's what she said. I need you to hug me. And I just hugged her for a little while. Mm -hmm. And our bodies relaxed and we were able to jump on the podcast. Yeah. Just notice, it's amazing. Um, The power, it's called, we're co-regulating. We're regulating each other's nervous systems just by touching. Sometimes we don't even have to touch, but especially with kids, touch is so powerful. So if you put your hand on their shoulder when you want to look them in the eye, especially for boys and just to, to talk to them, especially if you're speaking words of honor or encouragement, words of, um, even, even of correction, like buddy, I wanted you. And you look, you know, to look right in their eye, but just with a gentle hand on their shoulder, not like we're coming down on them, but just like, I want you to see me right now. And I want you, and I'm, I'm, I see you, like I see you. So I'm not holding kids, their, their little face in your hands. I want to make sure I'm saying that right holding their face in your hands and just putting their your hands on either side of your cheek. That is probably one of the most tender um, uh, ways of, of, of speaking and connecting with a child that it's like this just direct into them. Like I'm holding you and I'm speaking words of love or blessing into you. Um, but these are the things they don't forget because they're felt experiences. They're not just heard, right? Auditory, like the words we say to them are just one sense. And a lot of the times they don't even understand the words we use, <laughs> especially with younger kids. Um, but they know how they felt when they mm-hmm. left you. That's it. And so um, sometimes when all else fails and you're not sure what to do, like Kennedy and I were just laying on the couch the other night 
And I mean, she has like my hand, she's holding my hand this way. She's holding my other hand, you know, like crossing over her. And I realized like she literally just wants to be held like every part of her little body just touching me. And it was healing to me too. Like it was like, yeah, obviously the enemy has just distorted and just, oh, it makes me so mad. The that relationship between parent and child, obviously in between husband and wife too, but there is is such a pure Mm. and lovely version that I think we've almost moved away from because we're concerned about how dark and distorted the enemy has made it. And, um, that is a lie (laughs) and our kids need our touch and we need their, we need to be, we need to be, loved by them too one of my favorite moments is when our young son will just he'll i'll be holding him and he'll just start playing with my face and touching my beard and you know just rubbing my face and rubbing my nose and he'll he'll point he'll poke my eyes it's just like he's studying every part of my face and i think there's there's something about that for development of a child Mm -hmm. to be able to have access to um a parent's ability to do uh, obviously non-sexual touch really, really well. I mean, non-sexual touch is what, uh, Christy loves. That's my love language. I mean, that's language. your love language. That's and, my and love language. Like, and then, and then, it, and then he'll veer it into, and I was like, well, I just liked it when you were just like playing with my hair. Yeah. yeah. And not the, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's just like, so calming. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yes. Yeah. It sure is. Um, so yeah, just that whole sense of um, there's a, there's there's a co-regulating that happens, and I think yeah. that's really important uh, to pay attention to. And then um, the last one that I have is uh, that, that we have done, and and this is the hardest one I think of all of them. To be quite honest, for each of you, because I think we make I, I think there's excuses for everything, but. Uh, It's taking everything that you have on your calendar right now and putting it up. Our friend, my friend, uh, Jeff and Alyssa Bethke, they do this, but they'll literally write everything that they have on their calendar on a three by five note card, put it in the table, in the middle of the table, and they will eliminate, they will, they will eliminate the things that do not need to be in their lives. And so what's on the chopping block? Like they will literally pick up the card and put things on the chopping block. We've done this. Mm -hmm. We haven't done it. We haven't done it in that exercise way, but we've done it by looking at our calendars and going, "Okay, what needs to go?" And this is what's really hard about this: is this is where every yes means somebody else's no, and there are a lot of yeses that we feel obligated to do. Maybe in our communities, maybe in our um, uh, in our within our local circles, that maybe God isn't necessarily calling us to do, but we just feel obligated to do it. But it's pulling away from our time with our kids. It's pulling away from our time with our families. And and it's leading to more and more hurry. And I would just really encourage you to take a look at how you are prioritizing yeah. your activities in your home, the activities your kids are involved in, the key activities you're involved in, to make sure that they are life-giving and uniting your family, especially if you have young kids and, and you have kids that are uh, that, that are under your roof, that, that you want to coalesce, you want to... Um, uh, uh, bring your family unit and be integrated in, in, in a healthy way. We've got to find those things that are, that are helpful. Yeah. And I think, I mean, this obviously we goes into so many nuances and everyone has a million questions, but what about this? What about birthday parties? What about, you know, um, it's so unique to your family. And right, yet right. if I, I, I could just say, if you're still struggling and you're still feeling like you're racing through your life, then I'm guessing there's still things that need to be chopped. Um, and yet there's, it gets so normal to us that we're like, well, we can't get rid of that. Like, and, and it, because you've not done it yet. And I would just caution you to think in a way that just, it feels a little bit like a few degrees outside of how you've thought or planned your life thus far. Because obviously if you continue the way you're going, you're going to get the results that you're currently getting. Mm -hmm. And when the only way to make it to see change is to make a change. And I mean, for us, every time we we use like practicals, people are like, well, but our kids are, they like this or we like, and that's totally like, 
I, we absolutely get that. And there's also seasons. Totally get that. Um, we're in a, I would, but I would also say this too. It, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of that. Like, well, our kids do this and our kids do that. But if you're still struggling, mm-hmm. then what needs to go? Like yeah. ask yourself that thing because we are given the t- time is a gift. I mentioned this earlier. Time yeah. is a gift because it's a gift. It can be taken from you at any moment. Mm-hmm. As uh, Joey Odom said to us, uh, our friend Joey Odom a few weeks ago on the podcast said that 90% of the time that we have with our kids will, we will have, we will spend 90% of the time with our kids by the time they're age 18. You know, that's convicting for me because that means I need to be spending that time well, and I need to be using that time well. But you were also given another gift, not just time. You were given the gift of Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And I think our culture has so fought against rest and Sabbath that I would just encourage you to try taking a full Sabbath day a week for one month, whether it be a Saturday or a Sunday or a Friday, whatever works for your family schedule. It doesn't have to be Sunday. It could be whatever day. Pick that day and try it for one month and say no to everything else and good. see if your family doesn't change. Just receive the gift. So good. That's all I have. Well, then let's not hurry through. Let's just <laughs> slowly end and take our time. Guys, listen, remember, we have My Kids EQ coming up, the, the workshop, yeah. the coaching workshop. Please see in the show notes. You can sign up for that. Uh, we love you guys. We are grateful for you guys. Again, go to uh, famousnumber.com slash podcast as well. If you uh, have any topics or anything you would love us to be covering over the summer months and the fall coming up, we are currently in podcast planning mode and would love to hear your topics. And until next week, keep in mind that the greatest red carpet you will walk is through your front door. Keep being famous at home. <laughs>